All right. Hello and welcome to the this week's episode of the the Ncast. I was gonna say Z. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is preseason week four. Um, I am your guest, Burnerator, and <laughs> with me is the host, Orange, and Hi. along with Gomeljack. Guest Gomeljack. Yeah. Yes. So let's so let's just jump into match here. one. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Cloud at Hokage. Yeah. Um Cloud was really really surprising. B was really really solid. Yeah, B was doing really well. Um I was happy to see that as well as Utakata. Utakata was putting in some work too. Mhm. Um this kind of makes it difficult for Cloud to figure out who they want to put on their inactive though. Um, eh, I mean, sort of, kind of, not shakier really. They were in earlier weeks. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. With with, with Gamer Junkie, I, I have a feeling that he's just going to ch- chip off um, <laughs> B because yeah, he just hates him. <laughs> but hey, that that's fine. Could be, we could be surprised. Yeah. Um, um, I, I do like Kage. B's play style, though. It's nice and fast. Yeah, but he was. He, he wasn't was very bad. I mean, he was very dodgy. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, he, Utakata could take some lessons from him, you know, because he was getting hit by ultimate <laughs> left and right, you know. But... Yeah. Yeah. Um, as for Hokage's side of things, I feel like they did really well mm-hmm. this time Tsunade around. Tsunade was a lot different. Yeah, uh, disabling her grab seemed to help her a fair bit. Yeah, uh, um, a lot. Tilt too, wasn't it? Didn't they disable her tilt as well? I yeah. Think so. Yeah. I think they had both. Um, but definitely the grab seemed to have made the difference because they had her tilt disabled in previous weeks and she was still mm-hmm. not doing great. Actually, um, the one who was kind of disappointing was Hashirama, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, that's been the case so far. I've mm-hmm. heard that they, they've had a couple tests where he he's shown promise, so yeah, that's nice. Um, I think Hokage is going to be another team that is uh, going to struggle with choosing their they're inactive for the first trimester which is right around the corner or uh, lineups it's and this builds friday tomorrow yeah uh yeah. lineups and builds are due tomorrow so that's a thing yeah we're recording this on uh tuesday night <laughs> yeah well it'll get up tonight it's fine yeah we don't necessarily have to date it but hey we did that's true most of the time when this goes up it's not very long after we record it so mm-hmm. it's almost like you're there but Anyways, um. <laughs> Cloud was really solid. Um, I was really yes. impressed with B. Um, and Hokage, sure. they were they were a lot more solid than they used to be, than the past Boruto week or two. Boruto was more solid. Yeah, Boruto was definitely a lot more solid. Um, but they they still unfortunately lost. So I don't think Boruto was in yeah. though, was he? <laughs> he he was. He was. Was Boruto yeah. in? Oh wait, no. Yeah, he, he was. wasn't. <laughs> He wasn't? No. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? The last time we saw him, I... Uh, some of these blend together. Um, yeah. No, it's... Uh, yeah, Borto was the one. It was Borto and... Hirzen, was it? On the bench this week? Naruto no, Hirzen was in. Yeah. Oh, Hirzen was? was doing okay. He was doing really well. Uh, Minato it must have been kind Minato of okay. or Naruto. Is probably... Or so then, um, yeah. yeah, I, I mix some of that stuff up. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I would like to see more Boruto though, personally. Mm-hmm. Um, I know he didn't show up. Well, now I do, but uh, Hokage on the whole did pretty well this week. I liked, I liked Hirzen again. He didn't try as many ultimates as I, uh, would have wanted him to, but, or would have hoped he did. But uh, mm-hmm. he still did all right. Uh, I, I was definitely very uh, surprised by Tsunade, though. That was very yeah. nice to see. Unfortunately, she was only in one lineup compared to Hashirama, who yeah. was in two, and he kind of tanked <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, that kind of brought them down. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like they might have been able to win if Tsunade was in more, or at least Hashirama was in less. Yeah. So... Yeah, and if we know. actually disabled um, the the charge jutsu for Minato that we need to make sure to ch- disable. Yeah, well, I did it. I did it. I I 
I've done that, so it's all good. Mm. I, I wonder um, if if they ever decided maybe try to disable like um, Hashirama's tilt. I wonder how that would actually help him because he actually seemed to use it a fair he bit. Does not use too much it. Yeah. He, he spams it a bit, and they have disabled it if I recall correctly. It oh. was a, it's a nice tilt. But... Was it disabled that match? No, not that match. That but... match? Not oh, you mean okay, I got you. But yeah. since the since the first trimester roster customization. Yeah, they they did do that. Oh, okay, uh, good. Recently. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, definitely oh, wait, a good no. match. I would say Hashirama still has no? his tilt. Just his grab. Just his grab. Okay. That that uh, is I know very they did questionable. Similar for Boruto, but I feel like it could work better for Boruto. Because his his tilt leaves him um, open, similar to like Orochimaru's tilt, where like he'll use it and he'll get caught. Yeah. So yeah. Same thing with Jugo. It it's a good tilt. It's definitely better than Jugo's. It's just his use of it is questionable. <laughs> um yeah, as for the fighters that really stood out to me in this match is definitely Tsunade and uh B. So that was really good. Mm -hmm. Uh like you said though, I wish I would have seen Tsunade more because I love Tsunade. Or Boruto more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that too. Um... Anywho, Anyways, on to the next match. We have Mist versus Minato. And this was uh, this was super was close, match. and it was great. Yeah, it was Minato. around five. Hmm? It would, yeah, it went, yeah, it went around five, and it actually came pretty close in the end. Yeah. Um, Minato learned that um, this, is, this is what happens to Ninja. All that stuff. <laughs> this is the fate this of the Ninja. This is the fate of the Ninja, yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm not really, um, I don't remember what my prediction what was for this one, but uh, I was very happy to see that Mist was able to win. Mm -hmm. um, I think it might have, my prediction actually might have been Mist, so it was nice to see that outcome. Uh, I really like how Yagura played this yeah. week. I liked how uh, Haku played, and Mei was decent. I feel like they might have to make some changes to her, but yeah, um, yeah seeing Mei again was Nice. She, she was well. I just Enjoyed I think Zabuza is kind of the one they're gonna have to work with a little bit too, because he he did okay, but I think they they still need to kind of work some kinks out with him. He was only in yeah. one lineup, but he. I mean, I think I don't even know if he was out as often because it was like a May Zabuza combo, and I think May was out more than Zabuza was. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it, it was a good combo. It's just that um, I don't think uh, Ultimate Chakra Saver worked for May. She no, she didn't really alt spam. I mean, she hit with a couple, but yeah, she uh, initiated a few, uh, quite a few team ults, but never hit any. And she, I think, she used her ult once yeah. and actually hit it. But I mean, yeah. Um, as for Zabuza, I noticed that he actually likes to throw his shuriken a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think they disabled that on this. I would be happy if they did. I don't remember, but uh, if they do, then that's great. Uh, I feel like that could help yes. him a fair bit. They disabled it. They did. Along oh, with awesome. his grab okay. and his tilt. All right. So they want the full nine yards with him. It's mm -hmm. good. Um, yeah, I feel like Miss is definitely one of those teams that uh, it's going to take some working out the kinks, but once those kinks get worked out, they're they're going to be really, really scary. Mm -hmm. Especially and, uh, for Amina too, actually, even um, Rin, actually, I was very impressed with her. And I was glad they had her in a lot. Just because she's Rin been kind of good. getting the back seat, you know, um, with Madara taking the front seat more more often than not. So it was nice to see what she can do. And she was actually, it felt like she was on a similar build that we've had Kushina on in the past, uh, with an attack plus two build, and it, it worked really well for her. Yeah. yeah, I think she had a similar build the the previous week, but uh, Madara was taking up all the spotlight. We didn't get to see her very much, but this time she was actually able to shine a bit more, and uh, I was I was impressed with what I saw from her. She put out some nice damage. Although there was that moment where uh, was it Zabuza that came out against her? And he just did a bunch of damage on her. Yeah. It was someone. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Zabuza. Yeah, um, I think it was too. Yeah. Overall, I mean, really entertaining match. Definitely one of my favorites this week. Mm-hmm. And with Trouble that, on to three. Taka on versus to Stone. Match, yeah. Oh, yay. Yeah. Burns What's to talk match. about? 
Uh, what did we <laughs> talk about? Well, um, it's it's already been addressed, but Kitamaru was basically the wall in that match for us. Whenever he oh, wasn't yeah. out, um, he we we were doing okay. We were able to you know get some damage in and all that. But when he was out, he was dealing way too much and taking way too little for us to even get <laughs> yeah. any ground. For so. sure. I mean, um, I am very interested to see how the, the changes we're doing, which we'll get to a little later. Uh, I'm interested to see how they impact Stone mm -hmm. in, uh, in the first trimester. Because they've been, I feel like they've been relying on Kitamaru a lot. They've often had him in all three of their lineups. Mm -hmm. They've put him on the heavy, the go-to ranged fighter build. And, uh, you know, that's two things that they're not really going to be able to do in uh, the first trimester. So, the, the other uh... thing, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. I was basically done with my statement. Oh, okay. I was going to say the other thing, too, is it's good to get wins, but in the preseason, when you have wins that are so one-sided, a lot of times where they get, don't get to their second or third lineup, you don't get data. And I think Stone's going to be lacking a lot of data come the regular season, not knowing exactly what um, to expect from their team. I think so too. Yeah, that that might be a, a hurdle that they have to overcome. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say, um, Jugo and Sakura, though. I mean, you guys can't. You guys brought it back to round five. I mean, even though the final round wasn't no, close, you still it brought wasn't it back round five. Round. It wasn't round five. No, we got to their second lineup. Oh, okay. yeah, and uh, we got I, wrecked. I think... We wow. um, their first lineup took out our first two. And then our last lineup yeah. brought it to the second lineup for them. Okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, it was still pretty good, though. I mean, like, at least the Jugo Sakura, that was pretty good. I mean, mm -hmm. those, those alts of Sakura's landing, like, consistently. Yeah. That was um, real nice. And she was throwing them out like freaking candy. You get an yeah. ult! You get an ult! Yeah! Uh, it, yeah and that's and... just straight up from um, Ultimate Chakra Saver and, and Chakra Plus One. Yeah. Um, Kitamaru was throwing out a lot of ults too, um, which is scary because he wasn't even on that type of build. Yeah. Um, and, Kitamaru's uh, ult is just really weird because it stays on the field for a short while after he uses it, and there's like three different spots because it's like webbing. So it's mm -hmm. even if it doesn't hit initially, they walk right into it. And it's just like it's a yeah. strange. Yeah. You can it's chakra dash right yeah. into it and still get hit. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know how that'll pan out. I might tweak that. I, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah. Um, as for the other people on Stone, I actually thought um, Roshi. I Roshi was damn good. Kitamar was definitely yeah. Kitamar was definitely the star attraction, and whenever he wasn't out, mm -hmm. um, like that one match where he didn't come in at all. Yeah, that was uh, that was when we were able to actually bring it to their yeah, second line. I know. <laughs> Yeah, when we got damage to um, actually stick. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I, I just, I mean, I'm hoping. I like Stone a lot. It's just right now in the preseason they haven't had very entertaining matches for me. Yeah, I mean um, they've, they've usually when I get to see the other characters like Sujikage is really fun. Yeah, and uh, Mu is. I'd like to see more of Han, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just hoping that Stone has uh, more consistent solidity across their roster. Mm -hmm. It'll be, it'll definitely be interesting going forward with them um, because yeah. they, they did do the whole um, defense plus and shuriken master stuff a lot. And that, that was a big reason why we had to take a look at them again is because they were the only team that had two of them and they were sweeping left, right, and center. Yeah. So. Yeah. That I mean, was kind we of a we in, we intentionally made it so that ranged characters would be a bit more powerful than normal characters um, going into mm -hmm. the season, but that was just a bit too ridiculous. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. I know not everyone's going to be happy about that change, but it's just. It's for the sake of balancing. Yeah. Um, I think there are definitely still many ways for range characters to to thrive this season. So yeah. and... I don't think that it'll be a huge hit for them. But uh, 
yeah, it'll be a lot less abusive. Yeah. Well, this will be this will be more to the um, ways of how ranged characters used to be, where they'd whittle you down a lot, and they would um, just keep you at a, dis- at a distance, and as opposed to what they were this season or this uh, preseason, where it was just a lot of damage, um, being very safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Where you can you can still be safe. You can still do the defense plus two build. You're just not going to do as hard. much damage. Yeah. Yeah. With the type of build that we had possible, it's like that's pretty much a mm-hmm. a completely safe strategy. You're you're basically covering all your bases with that. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, but, yeah, I mean, it's nice that it went to around four <laughs> at least. Yeah. Um, and so, to be fair, um, I was taking I was taking Zyla's advice, and we did a sort of weird build on on Taka Sasuke that just Taka, did not yeah. pan out. Yeah, it was. I mean, preseason, whatever. But yeah, yeah. I, uh, I I I honestly think that Jutsu spamming him is the way to go. It's probably yeah. I mean, yeah. there are just going to be some characters like that. So mm-hmm. what are you going to do? Yeah. Anywho, uh, uh, next match, match was uh, oh, yeah, match Asuma. Before. Hmm. I was gonna say Asuma at Sand actually. Yeah. At Asuma, Sound. At, yeah. Of Sand. <laughs> the other sound. Sound um, Sand. Yeah. Sound. Um, sound Sand. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, really nice showing from Sound. I believe they actually won this. Um. It's nice, nice to get that result from them. I'm sure that was very very relieving because i know they've had some struggles this preseason um mm-hmm. to yuya was really good again of course as always and uh i, I was actually really surprised by wanderer sasuke yeah it's actually yeah he was really good and in- incredible how how good One of he his was. better showing yeah yeah um as for awesome side of things i uh i don't know I I I'm really iffy on actually Asuma. Like he was better this week now that he had But uh now that I he had know. one. It's just it seems like he didn't get he had his grab disabled this week. Okay. Um I I did notice the difference. It made him a little bit more aggressive. Um but they don't have his grab disabled in the first trimester, so I'm not I'm wondering how that's uh, going to work out. Um, yeah, we'll have to see. Definitely, I definitely liked both of the Shikamaru's a lot this week. Um, mm-hmm. It was nice to see them on one team. They did really well together. Uh, still up in the air, which one of them is going to go on the the inactive roster, or if it's going to be like Asuma or something. But uh, yeah, I, I was really happy to see both Shikamaru's doing well. Mm-hmm. And honestly, that and... that combination of just the two just wrecked. So I mean, honestly, if that's uh, something that maybe Anthony will look at, um, I mean, that's a possibility. And like I had mentioned right. before, I thought possibly even Asuma may be a, a option for a, a bench at least for a trimester, just to kind of get him going yeah. again. Yeah. Um, because honestly, he seemed to, you know, he's a lot different now than he used to be. For sure. Yeah. He can't just come out the gate being insane damage anymore. Um. He's a little bit more passive. He uses his jutsu a lot, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, still, I, I like this match a lot. I always like getting to see uh, to Yuya perform. Actually, she's she's really entertaining, um, and unique. I think that's the big draw for me. Um, yeah, she's just really good, and uh, mm-hmm. I, I also enjoyed what little we saw of Yamato, but. Uh, I didn't feel like we got to see that much. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, all around, it was a good match, but... Yeah, it was very close, if I recall yeah. correctly. Very close at the end. It was. Went to round five, so mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah, because yes. I know at least Asuma made it to their last, yeah, so... Yeah, freaking um, to Yuya with those dokies, man. Yeah, very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and even um, uh, I know even Kieran Sasuke showed a bit at the end too when he was um, with his spam that he was kind of using like even with his ults yeah. he actually threw a few out and that ults actually I mean isn't that like a pretty good range too it's like wherever they're standing it like uh, it, it hits yeah. in that location 
yeah, yeah it, three it's, times. it's like a lot it's like a kamui ult essentially yeah but it strikes three times so yeah it's three times as good um <laughs> actually it like, strikes oh. in three <laughs> 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 uh, nobody uh, will get that. I, I'd like to. I'd like to see um, uh, Chidori's Drew Spear on him more, though. Is I don't know. Um, I don't know if we've gotten to see him with that a lot, but I definitely enjoy that ultimate. And it's uh, if if they got him to spam it somehow with uh, Berserker or uh, our new Scroll Relentless, then he could easily break guards with that thing because it just keeps running into your guard. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, good match. I enjoyed it. Yeah. On right. to the next one. Sage versus Kuranai. Oh man. Sh- Ship it in Kiba. Ship it in Kiba. Yeah, ship it in yeah. Kiba. Yep. <laughs> uh, another good match. Uh, I, we did see a lot of ultimate abuse from Sage. Uh, mm-hmm. which I mean, it's, it's par for the course. Hashirama, from Hashirama with five element seal and without five element seal, <laughs> he's yeah, still yeah. To spam quite well. Either way. either way, yeah, and that that was actually another reason why we looked at alt spammers, because Hashirama yeah. didn't even have it, and he was able to still alt spam. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jiraiya did pretty well this week, too, I oh, thought. Oh, yeah, definitely. And Sage I, I Kabuto. Like, I like seeing him play. That yeah. That was interesting. Uh, Sage Kabuto, definitely a lot better showing from him this time around. I don't think they even messed with him, like, at all. Really? Huh. It was just... That's weird. I mean, I, I'm checking right now. Same build, and then, like, nothing different, though. Huh? Huh. Yeah, um, same build, same it everything. The only better. difference is they put Awakened Fury and Released Power on Sage Kabuto. Right, which, I and mean, they wanted him one. to awaken. But... Yeah, and he just threw out a couple of ultimates, which did some pretty great damage. Yeah, it was it was nice. Um, yeah, a, a lot of ult-heavy uh, strategy from Sage this week. Maybe some of it more unintentional, but uh, Kurunai was nice to watch too. Um, Shino didn't really get to do as much this time around. I liked, I liked what Shippen and Kiba did though. He it was kind of a uh, highlight there. He was he was pretty much had the most time. Like whenever he was in, he would just be like throwing his alts out and uh, Getsuga and everything like that. He was he was yeah doing well. he was yeah he was really. Uh, I felt like he was their star player this week. Uh, once again, PTS Shino didn't really get to show his stuff. Yeah. Um, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, Hinata, was she in this week? Because I don't feel like she was. She was. She, she was. She, she, she was being uh, uh, ultimate grab, or she was being grabbed by uh, Sage Naruto quite a bit. And she was yeah. That's right. That's yeah. Right. I remember made the that joke now. that she's just throwing yeah. a match because she wanted to get keep getting grabbed. <laughs> but she did a lot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Man, yeah. man Naruto is so feisty. <laughs> I feel so safe now. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Um, Sage Naruto once again also good. So yeah. I mean, he's a very solid character. Sage is looking pretty good mm-hmm. going into uh, the pretty swole. So is Kurenai. Yeah, pretty which is, swole. Which is like, very yeah. nice. Yeah, hey. it's nice to see both these teams doing well. They've had some. uh some ups and downs in previous seasons. Yeah. Yep. And All I remember, right, I remember so... I made a call that it was a round four uh-huh. win, but it was round three, even though it said round right. four on the on the thing, and it still resulted in a round four win. So, yeah. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on to the next match. We have God Uchiha damn. versus Kakashi, and this is the sole reason why you all are staring at salad eating a salad. <laughs> Except the salad is is, is Kakashi. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh wait, no. that could go that could go <laughs> very wrong. Yes, exactly. No, stop it. 
Um, yeah, I uh, I actually really liked uh, Team Kakashi's showing this week. They did. They actually held up pretty well against Uchiha. Yeah. Um, of course, there was that point when uh, Salad just kept fucking everybody with their ultimate, but. Um, I'd say despite other than the one sidedness of this match, I'd still yeah. well, matches I enjoyed a lot because of the fact that match for round one with um the Shishibi Uchiha and uh, Itachi, they both um awakened and then um oh, uh, Kakashi yeah. also team awakened um with those awakening scrolls, which um they have been using and they've actually been utilizing them pretty well, at least to the point where they're actually doing what you know they are intended for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Regenerator actually saw some decent use this this time around. Yeah, a little bit. Um, but yeah, it, it's also the reason why we we went ahead and relooked at that as well. Um, yeah. because <laughs> Regenerator hasn't really been that big of a deal. Yeah. It, yeah, it hasn't been um, that great because of the fact that you can just switch out and hey, it's useless now. Yeah. And before, and, you and, had to be kind of all in to what you were doing with the yeah. previous Regenerator. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I mean, we'll cover that stuff more later, but it, it was definitely nice to see the Awakenings from Team Kagashi, because I think there was actually two instances where they did that. Match one and match two, they did, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was nice. It's always nice to see more... Uh, awakenings and actual usage of awakenings Mm -hmm. so yeah definitely makes it uh more i don't know what the word i'm looking for is not versatile it's just more i guess i'll just say more interesting (laughs) um but yeah i mean other than the spam that really did them in like i thought team kakashi was doing super well so that was nice yeah, um, they just Sasuke kind of fell stuff. flat because of the spam. Yeah, that's true. Um, Uchiha, uh, of course, Shisui was doing really well. Sarada was also doing well. Um, obviously, we saw them the most in this match, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't even remember their round one lineup, to be completely honest. Kakashi? No, Uchiha's. Uchiha's. Uh, let's see. I will it say was... uh, Uchiha's also... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it was Itachi reanimated and Shisui. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's Shisui we saw a lot of this week. Uh, yeah. Itachi... He was a support in there. And that support of his is uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> he is a very, very, um, very good character. Yeah. He is, he is one of the best um mm-hmm. itachi i don't feel like we got to see that much of uh it's kind of interesting because he before preseason started we were looking at him and he just seemed like the most powerful thing ever like yeah i mean of course we've nerfed his tilt and everything and if we didn't do that he would be absolutely bonkers yeah but uh i don't know he's just i, I think um Shisui and Sarada have kind of taken the spotlight on Uchiha right now. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, nice to see, but yeah, uh, I'm hoping we get to see some more on their other characters, but, uh, yeah. you know, maybe not be too good. Freaking Uchiha, hopefully. man. They're looking really, really <laughs> strong. Like, stupid strong. Yeah, I mean, they've Oof. always been. Well, yeah. So, but still, ugh. yeah. It, it it is. I will say, even though they're really strong, I do enjoy watching their matches. So, I don't I mean... fuck Vegeta. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I I like their matches. Um, yeah. So I mean, good match overall. It was really nice to see Kakashi perform. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm hoping also... that they improve further. And I'm also glad to see that uh, in the girl actually did some disables for the regular season. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> he did. He did some much needed maintenance that that needed to be done. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really happy about that. So. Yeah. Okay. On to the next match, which is Guy versus Jinchuriki. Woo. Woo. As Darky said, it was the rematch we all expected of the championships, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where you just <laughs> smashed them. We... <laughs> I mean, 
I wasn't expecting it to be like, okay, I know Guy is a little shaky right now. Um, I was expecting it to at least be a little closer. I mean, it's not like, I don't feel like we completely squashed them or anything. It's just, I, I don't know. I was hoping for a closer match. I mean, because whatever, the Jinchuriki is OP thing. I I kind of yeah. like in streams, I react to it. But honestly, I'm, I'm kind of past that at this point. But I just I just um, do it just to give you shit, man. <laughs> right. And and people do it because of that. So that's yeah. kind of like, I don't know. Um, I will say um, Guy did have some good um, shows from, um, I know Shippen Lee, of course. He was definitely doing really well. He had some yes. good alts. Um, and even yeah. with um, Konohamaru. Um, that was also very yeah. good. It just just happened that we actually had some ultimate, um, you know, uh, substitution uh, on our you know supports. So right. We, you know, Naruto yeah, took a few, helpful. and he actually took a few even in the match, and he was on an actual uh, defense build. So it, it just yeah. it just really showed the um, the strength of uh, having some solid uh, defensive fighters. Yeah, I felt like um, our victory this week was just more attributed to. Um that kind of stuff, more defensive sort of play, because I mean, it's not like, it, Team Guy wasn't slouching, they were they were doing really well with the aggression, uh, the ultimate spam, and uh, I mean, Lee and Konohamaru were definitely the standouts in this mm -hmm. particular match. Uh, well, Lee was in all three lineups. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't exactly... Remember, I think was Ten Ten in. Ten Ten was like, in. Yes, Ten Ten was in, and she was pretty lackluster. Uh, I, she, I like the usage of she, her support. Um, yeah, her support pressure, was great. Um, when she was in, just with her um, those mines that she lays down, and just some of the yeah. range that she had. Once she was not in the lineup, I felt that I think maybe you mentioned it, but I'm not sure who mentioned it. But that the pressure that Ten Ten was providing um, to um, you know Naruto and Gara had kind of left a little bit and they had more rain on the field than they did before just because they didn't have all the explosions and all the stuff going and like against them to keep them back all right yeah if they can if they can work out 10 10 and make her more um solid i feel like she is going to return to being very very useful uh member on their team so yeah i mean without stuff like instant awakening though she's going to struggle a little bit more because um, it is my personal opinion that I believe out of the ranged combos in the game, she has one of the weakest. They like, I don't know the projectiles. Some of them have limited range. Some of them fly all over the place for some reason. And it's just, yeah, I, I think it's going to be interesting for team guy to try to figure out how to make her work better. Um, but I, I liked as for us, as I know I've been focusing a lot on Guy. Uh, I liked, I don't know, I liked what Fu was able to do this week. That was cool. She used her tilt a lot. Yeah. Um, a lot. Actually, generated a lot of pressure. It was really nice. Even even killed Tintin while she was on the ground. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. Um, yeah. I mean. I, I enjoyed the match. I feel like I would have enjoyed it even if we had lost because we had some good performances in there. Um, overall, I think it was just a very solid match, and I hope Team Guy continues to keep improving. I, I will say for uh, Guy, Guy himself, I would like to, because I think he's been on attack plus two um, for like most weeks. Yes. I would like to see him like on a defense build. I think he might actually do pretty well hmm. with that, um, honestly. So maybe it's something to keep in mind. But I think he would maybe be a good candidate, especially if maybe they want to throw an attack on Lee a little bit and be spread out some of the ultimate pluses, uh, chakra pluses. Yeah, that, that's that's a good point. Um, I know Lee works really well on his, like, ultimate nuke build. Because, I mean, he gets really crappy charge rate on ultimate plus two. But the ultimates just hit, like, truck. Um, so that's already a really solid build for him. And if they wanted to go different directions with it, they could. Uh, I feel Lee is a really solid character overall. So, yeah. Uh, as for Guy himself, I, I liked the attack 
plus builds on him, but uh, like you said, uh, tank builds could work too. Yeah. Um, usually with melee heavy characters, it can usually uh, work either way with those types of things. Mm-hmm. At least what we've seen so far. Yeah. So and yeah, I I do want to see um now with the with the maximum rules that we have in your lineups um mm-hmm. where you can only have your guys twice or once every five weeks you can or or you can put somebody once three times in your your lineup and then you can't do that for the next four weeks um yeah that'll be very interesting to see what guy does because guy has been kind of doing that with lee the entire time lee yeah they've been doing that with lee a lot yes Um, so yeah it'll be interesting um it's i don't think they'll suffer from it too much because having lee in in two lineups is still definitely a very good thing um Mm -hmm. and they do have other fighters which can back up the lineup so, like Neji. Yeah. I mean I kind of would like to see Neji a little bit cuz it's I mean we've seen it like a few times but not really well PTS Neji. PTS I, I don't yeah. think we're going to see ship in Neji like at all. Yeah, I think he might end up being uh active. Yeah. Cuz he um, has just it's so unfortunate, man. After after season 2, he just became the butt of that team, honestly. <laughs> The part of that team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see, because, I mean, we haven't seen TS Neji very much at all. Um, and, I don't know, there's some interesting things they could do with him. I, I'm not really sure what kind of build to go for, because I think we've only, literally only seen him, like, one time. Um, so... Maybe maybe he's been in another lineup since then, but I don't really recall it. So, yeah, not really sure what to what to think about him. Other than I'd like to see more. Yeah. Yeah. All right, on okay. to our final match, which was Sand versus Akatsuki. Oh, this, this shouldn't take long. Yeah. No, um, it shouldn't. <laughs> oh boy, Sand swept. Um, oh yeah, and there was it, it was largely Time. because of Tamari and Gara. Yeah, same yeah. reason they slept preseason week. Two. I will say this would be something for Akatsuki. I know they were you know all you know they were preseason, but I noticed that one of the reasons why they probably had a hard time was because in all their lineups they had really no minus their first when they had Conan. Everyone was close range. They had no uh, range. They had no range on them at all. So they were just just bodied. Much. Yeah, there there was not much they could do to counter the ranged aggression. Um, I feel like Kakazu. I think I actually might have said this, but Kakazu would have been really good for that. Yeah, and um, I think that's something for uh, Makoski to take from this is that if they're against a team that maybe has some range in there, to throw some of that in there, just you know, as a you know, of course they were looking to test naturally because they had to dawn in there a few times, uh, pain. Um, but yeah. Conan was just in the first start of the lineup, so she didn't really get much time after that. Um, they had Toby in, and of course Toby, you know, is good, but his also his support jutsu is also, you know, not too far, and it's not going to do anything against like a Tamari who's just hanging back, just throwing her wind at you. Right, because I mean, even if it interrupts her for a little bit, she can just uh, recover from that and just throw more projectiles out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, definitely. I mean, it goes without saying, but a very strong showing from Sand. Um, Akatsuki, yeah, I mean, I feel like there's not much to say for Sand because we've already covered this particular team in the second week and basically all we saw from them this week. So um, as for Akatsuki, uh, I liked what little we saw of Conan. Um, I think they just don't really use her very much, even though I feel like she's pretty good i i think the issue is possibly just some of the stigma that she has from previous seasons i think when people look at certain characters they get the, the impression that they have is from t- t- a full burst um yeah and that's nowhere near how those characters are now i mean as you've seen with like raikage no. asuma how those used to be very dominant um suigetsu they are not the same as they used to be because of the system and i think conan actually benefits a lot because 
she seems a lot more aggressive and she did some good combos again it's just hard to get some good data off of a match like this where they were literally getting yeah. destroyed the whole time yeah um it, it is harder in general to get data off of fighting ranged characters because it's not you're putting your characters in a different type of scenario than they're usually in or that they're usually going to be in because what they're only like seven eight range characters and it's not much i mean we have 98 characters in our league right now yeah less than 10 percent of that is range characters it's just when you have the perfect storm of supports that are also close range on top of a character that you know i mean you know pain i mean he he has what like uh (laughs) almighty push when he's close there and like does he have any actually ranged options yeah exactly and i feel like that that could be a pretty big weakness for Akatsuki uh, this season. But like you mentioned, uh, more usage of Kakazu, Konan. Uh, and Toby can do that too. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely... Konan and having Konan and Kakazu in there as a forefront is really good, you know, because they don't have Kisame, which is actually that a shark bomb was a huge thing for them because you Kakazu, yeah, Kisame, shark bomb. And I think even Itachi's Fireball Jutsu, they had some pretty dangerous stuff. Um, they, yeah, they have seasons. a lot of ranged pressure in past past seasons. It's something that they don't have now and something they can't rely on. And uh, I know that stigma against Conan is a thing, but I've said this a few times now, you have to try to let go of that kind of thing. Um, because this is a completely different game, completely different playing ground. I've changed so much. And exactly, like look at even uh, Hiruzen. I mean, come on, yeah. I mean, the Hiruzen of this season so far is looking to be very strong, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I can understand having the Sigma there, but I feel like in order for your team to grow, you have to get over those things. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much all I have to say about the last match because it was just destruction from <laughs> hidden sand. Pretty much sand, sand everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It it was not that great. No. Um, but anyways, let's go on Happy to. Happy for sand, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they have they have a solid team. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, there there there's a reason why they're in North Kai or fucking North Kai. Kage. Kage. Sorry. <laughs> It's okay. You've been you've been dealing with a lot of DBZ League stuff. Lately, yeah. So, in fact, we had a really big meeting yesterday and went over a lot of things for the transfer between yeah. season seven and eight. But I anyways, don't ask me because I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, Anywho, let's go on to the question. endcast questions. First off, we have reanimated Itachi. He asked, other than Jinchuriki. What other teams do you consider overpowered? God fuck Has- uh, Hashtag yeah, SSJ ins. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Ah, ha, ha. SSJ. Um, I don't really. I mean, okay. Right now, I don't feel like. I mean, Uchiha Clan's up there too, but I don't feel like you can say any one team is overpowered. Maybe I like can. certain lineups from a team are <laughs> overpowered, like Gara and Tamari. That's really strong. But I don't feel like you can really hold that against an entire team. That's kind of my stance on it. Um, I guess if I were to pick some teams that have really strong potential lineups, I would pick Uchiha and Sand. And Taka is pretty up there too, but they've hit some difficulties in the yeah. preseason. Well, um, also in three of the preseason weeks, we were just straight up testing. So yeah. That's, that's the thing too. I feel like another team who has some really strong potential lineups is actually Team Sage. Yeah, Sage um, is a good one too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't call any of these teams OP. It's just that they can pull out some really strong teams and in a match. Again, I'd say it's really hard to determine if a team, at least right now, would be overpowered, just for the reason that this is, it was preseason, people are testing, so you don't really know 
if that's something yeah. you would see in a normal um, match, you know, and they're doing, you know, they're yeah. testing things that haven't fun. Have you seen what works testing these certain characters that may, they may not even use come in the regular season. So, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I know most of what we've seen in preseason has been in earnest. It hasn't been just like testing or to throw people off or whatever, because we're not, we're not in a stable enough environment where, like with DBZ League, people can do that because they've literally been with these teams for like three or four seasons now and things are pretty much set in stone. Mm-hmm. Um, this is completely different. And yeah, uh, I don't feel like any one team is going to be OP. It's whatever. You can keep doing the Jin Cherokee is OP meme. I don't really care. But um, I as for my stance on our team, I, I do think we're strong, which I'm happy with. Um, but I would, I don't know. I, we are still trying to figure out what type of builds to use on everyone. So, I mean, we have our, you know, Foo likes her ultimates, so that's that's a clear choice. Machina's really good at attacking. But we have people like Naruto and Gara and Obito, which are a little bit more in question as to what type of builds to stick them with, and, and Toby Rama too, to an extent. So well, I mean, I wouldn't agree with Obito because he's been really solid with his uh, alt game. Yeah, I guess, but it doesn't hit that often. Like <laughs> when it hits, it hits. Has... <laughs> That's true. However, he has been on a defense build more weeks yeah. than not. So, I mean, like, he hasn't really you, been built You guys haven't been, yeah. That's also true, yeah. I mean, granted, I mean, I'm pretty yeah. sure he's one of the guys that um, got nerfed with the the extra inclusion for um, ranged alt users, but it's still yes. a thing that you can look into. Um, uh, As for our... Uh, powerhouse team i mean obviously it's going to be Fu and kushina that's already proven to be a very strong team for us to use um so yeah i mean i I feel like this question is just me more answering about what teams have really strong lineups that they can use so yeah i don't think anybody's op yeah (sighs) except for chiha clan fuck those guys no, yeah, kidding. basically, that's what mean, like... that's what I was trying to say before. Fuck those <laughs> Ochi. Right? I mean... the, the, the salad clan. Oh, fucking we the need salad to build clan. a great wall around Ochi. Yeah, then I mean that's get what Toby Rama did. To just fucking kill them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I like Ochi clan. Um, but yeah, so I think they're just that's, fucking strong. That's that question. Yes. Um, let's see. Next question from Shadow Soldier. In your opinion, what are the some of the weirdest builds in the league? And from what you've seen, do they work or not? I've heard you guys talk about odd builds, so I'm curious. Okay. I'm going to go over a couple of um uh examples of weird builds, in my opinion. Um, but at the same time, we've only seen the preseason, so Right. Eh. Like combining yeah, take it with a grain of salt. Combining ultimate plus but without any um chakra saver or anything, including um Berserker onto there and then Pack Rat, which is now hoarder. Like that's a weird build where you're not really trying to focus on anything. Yeah, there there's some weird builds that we've seen that are just kinda aimless. Yeah. And like, like sometimes was... an awakening scroll will be on there for like seemingly no reason. Yeah. Like... There was also the ultimate plus one or two with a uh, five element seal. Yeah, then... that was weird too. Yeah. Like super that was weird. weird. I think that was like... Rasa, right? Yeah, that was Rasa. Yeah, yeah. Why are you boosting his ultimate damage <laughs> if you don't want him to ultimate? That's just counterintuitive and. I mean, strange. hey, Shadow Soldier, you probably know why because you're on sand, so. By all means, if you want to head over to the the end quest, uh, end, end quest, end end quest. Cast end quest. End quest. <laughs> end quest. Like, Naruto insurance is out. This is. <laughs> we gotta get. Oh, we God. gotta get Naruto to sling some insurance. <laughs> Believe it. I go from roof to roof and give your friends free cable. 
<laughs> Nobody's gonna get that reference. <laughs> no. It's okay. Um, go go to um, the endcast responses. And let us know if you really want to, or just ignore this. Ah. Yes. Uh, but yeah, that's that's mainly the kind of weird builds that we've seen so far. Just things that kind of contradict one another, or things that just seem tacked on. Um. Which, I mean, you can go into the final customization and look at that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I can't pull that stuff up right now, so I can't look at any one build and be like, this is fucking weird. But uh, definitely that one Rasa build was strange to me um, and Burn. Uh, but I guess that one Kabuto build that the first week he was in, the Sage Kabuto build, that was kind of weird. You remember what that was, Burn? Because I the first Sage Kabuto like, build. Yeah. Oh boy, I'm blanking. I'm sorry. It was like Let's... some sort of Awakening Scroll, and then. Um, it wasn't was... week one. No, it was like week two or three. Uh, Versus, who were they? Were they against the uh, Hidden Sound? Was that who they were against? Uh, Sage Kabuto. Oh, they couldn't have. He was... Um, versus you guys. That's the first time we saw him. Okay, so versus so us. Defense plus one, ultimate dash, ultimate grab. Really? That was the first time he was in? Oh, yes. maybe I'm thinking about somebody else. You might be. I don't know. I don't know. Still, weird. that kind of seems weird. Like, you're giving him movement, and you're making him tanky, and you're just upping his grab? Yeah, it's a I mean, little I weird. I mean, I can understand trying to, like, because I, I, we did that with Gara a few times in the past. Like we've given him a defense plus one and then ultimate grab, just so he has like, or, yeah, you know, sometimes too. like with Naruto, defense plus two, ultimate tilt. Like he has a more solid form of damage that he can do, but that's still kind of weird. I, it just felt like they didn't really know what to do with yeah, him. I guess the weird. idea was just to have some defense and be able to dash in. I guess with the hopes of getting a grab off. Uh, Maybe. I mean, yeah. I mean, he did get grabs off that week, so... I think he got one or two, but I mean, it, there you go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's basically kind of the weird... I mean, sometimes builds that don't have Heaven Scrolls kind of, like... That, that's yeah. kind of weird to me sometimes, but those builds have done well before, so... I mean, it's not like it's... It's not like a weird... There were a few, I just can't recall one off the top of my head, but... I mean, it's, it's nice to yeah. see. I mean, it, it's interesting. I think that first Kakuzu build was like that. It was like two it was like two or three scrolls, but none of them were like any sort of heaven scroll. Kakuzu? So Yeah, uh, I think it was like ultimate grab release power and something no, else. No. The the first time that we saw Kakuzu? Unless I don't know mean... if it was the first time. But it might have been week two because Week two. Oh yeah, uh, ultimate grab, body flicker, release power. It's yeah. First off, I'm telling you right now, heaven scrolls are like the biggest bang for your buck. Just like in DBZ League, like mm -hmm. heaven scrolls, not having that is pretty detrimental. I know that. I mean, Pif sure has said that for, for DBZ League, characters. but I mean, it can work for some characters, maybe. But like, why though? <laughs> It's only I one point. Your... Yeah. I mean, and if someone's trying did. to do like an awakening build, they may opt to not take it just to have more room for maybe the awakening scrolls well, they yeah. want. But I... yeah. Well, so. for the most part, we've also lowered most of the awakening stuff so that you yes. can also yeah. fit. So you can still two fit awakening stuff. a heaven yeah. scroll in and then two. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. Um, yeah. I mean, there's nothing like that's been like, whoa, that's really strange. Like, that's just kind of a really dumb build. Like, I haven't seen any that I thought were just straight up stupid, but... Um, I think your face is stupid. Yeah, there's definitely... There's, <laughs> there's been a couple <laughs> weird ones so far. Yeah. And on to our last question we have from Oasis. What scroll do y'all suggest ranged fighter use in place of Shuriken Master Pro when they are taken down? And y'all have probably addressed this, but what uh, will DLC team alts be added to the game? The ults. We have um, them. Yeah, we have, we have all them. Except yeah. for Portos, Arada. That's yeah. the only one we don't have. 
Uh, the ults might already be active, but I only ask since Hokage's DLC team ult didn't activate when they did a team ult, as well as some others. Do um, you remember that instance? Because I don't. I don't. Um, does Edo Edo Minato actually count for the team? I believe he does. I think he does form it. I think it's just. Uh, I think they need Edo Hashirama to do it. Also, though, that's probably it. So that's yeah. probably what it was. Yeah. Um, Which can be modded, yeah. but um, we we have yeah, we, can we have the game and all the DLC. We have the season pass. I I literally mm -hmm. bought myself the game and the season pass, and then bought Darky the game and the season pass. Yeah. So I made sure. <laughs> so we both have everything. So yeah. yeah. Um, the only one you're not going to see, obviously, is Boruto Sarada, but it doesn't matter because yeah. they're not on the same team anyway. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. As far as the scrolls to use in place of Shuriken Master Pro, I mean, just uh, attack plus one if you really want to just add some. No, 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 no. I mean, or... th this is in place of Shuriken Master Pro, um, which is not the Heaven Scroll. Thinking of like, we'll oh, do oh, X okay. for Heaven Scrolls. What would I put in for my yeah. Earth Scroll? Okay, I got you. Um, I mean, the the Honestly... basic build that people were doing was defense plus two. Um, Berserker Shuriken and Shuriken Master. Pro. Berserker. Yeah. Or Shuriken Master. So what you can do is instead of, you know, Shuriken Master, because you're gonna have two points, I mean, does your character like ults? Ultimate chakra saver. Does your character like jutsu? Chakra saver. Does your character like to dash in and out? Well then ultimate dash. Um maybe and you don't like their thing. ultimate, yada yada yada. Yeah. Another thing is uh you know we do have the uh the one point um relentless which is like a, a lesser form of berserker so you can put that in and then just try to fit more scrolls in general on yeah or if you really want to go uh attack or defense and then berserker and then one more thing you could go with one of the new palm scrolls yeah um, um because they palm or toxic palm. they do work on every single full combo ender so that is yes. including ranged, yeah, including melee and air as well. combos, yeah, and um, just a, yeah. A, every combo ender. Um, right. I I do want to point out um that for the most part, uh, molten palm will usually be better than um toxic palm. Uh, except for the fact that it can be extinguished a lot faster. Whether you're just running yeah. around. Um, or you're actually, you know, you walk into water, then it's extinguished. But the reason why it's usually better is because it only has a 10 second duration and it doesn't actually nerf your last hit. And the reason why yeah. that's good is because when you do another full combo, it doesn't add on to the duration, it just refreshes it. So, like, if it right. has two seconds left in its tick, and you do another full combo, it won't tick up to 12 seconds. It'll just go 10 seconds. So you're losing right. just a tiny bit of damage. Whereas with Toxic Palm, the last hit is nerfed by, ha by half, um, and the duration is 20 seconds. So if you put it on somebody that does a lot of full combos, they're going to be clipping that dot like nuts. Yeah, I actually... I will say I feel like Toxic Palm is more of a, uh, and I and I know not everyone might be familiar with it yet because I just introduced it last night. Um, I feel like it actually might be a little bit better on characters, maybe not that do full combos more often, but just more combos in general and that chain a lot because yeah. you're not getting as much damage per second as you are with burning because that does more... Uh, more chip damage over its duration, but um, toxic. Like if you were to, because I tested this out, mm -hmm. molten palm, uh, a full combo, and then toxic palm, a full combo, and you just sand still for the molten palm duration, and then just also let the uh, duration of the toxic palm play out. The toxic palm is actually going to do a little bit less damage than the molten palm will. Mm -hmm. uh, just through chip damage and by the fact that the last uh, hit of the combo is nerfed. Um, 
but at the same time, it gives you 20 seconds to do more combos, more damage, mm-hmm. and keep the poison going. Not only that, but the longer the poison's going on, any damage you do is going to be boosted, which is the same for Molten Palm, but it's more situational because if you're not, if you're on a, a water map or something, or your character likes to move around a lot, that gets burned. Like it's not gonna, it's not gonna be as useful. So it's a lot more. There are ups and downs to each yeah. scroll. So I think there there's trade offs, um, which is what we were aiming yeah. for. Yeah, and either one, I feel like is is a good choice for a ranged character because, mm-hmm. like Burn said, you're technically getting four combos, actually five, because you have no air it might up, even down, be neutral six. It's six. Um, it's it's three ranged combos, three ground ranged combos, your air ranged combo, your ground melee combo, and your air melee combo. Oh yeah, that's so true. They de- that's a lot. They actually, yeah, they actually have more of a chance to inflict it, unless of course you have your ranged character with disabled melee combos or something. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so. It, it helps pad out their damage a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, definitely, uh, I would say one of those two scrolls. I know that was a really roundabout answer, but uh, I wanted to talk about Toxic Palm for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's brand new, and I felt that we should probably go over it. Um, is there anything you right, have to I add? Feel, I feel like some people might be confused about it right now. It's like, how do I use this? Like, yeah. Anyway, Gomo, yeah. yeah, do you have anything? Uh, yeah, actually, what I was going to say was, um, <clears throat> more often than not with um, uh, the Burning Palm, the, um, what was it called? The Burning Palm, right? Molten Palm. palm. Molten Palm. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. You, um, you helped palm. make the name, bud. <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> Come on. Um, but more often than not, people are moving around more often. So yeah. you may not get the full duration out of Molten Palm, whereas with the... Um, toxic palm it can be a longer duration but the only way to extinguish it is to tag you cannot yeah, yeah. It, it will stay on you consistently so that's something to think about as well you know more, you're not gonna have someone stand still unless you know you're you know hashirama or something like that and you want to stand around for a while and not mm-hmm. do anything <laughs> yeah. and take yeah. damage but and it's also reduced if you move around a lot with the burning with the um with the molten palm so there's a lot of different elements so again very situational but i feel that even if um toxic palm is a little less damage overall i feel it's more consistent possibly if the yeah. opponent doesn't tag yeah definitely. yeah it's, it's it's interesting because i haven't quite gotten down extinguishing the the burning effect to a science um the the different hypotheses i have for it is because right now if you stand still like i said it'll last for 10 seconds if you're ninja moving around the entire time you can get it off as as early as five seconds Mm -hmm. um i haven't quite tried it out with just regular walking it might take a little bit more time than ninja moving but if that's the case it might just be dependent on how much ground you're covering in general. Yeah. Does it might ninja so, moving on a water map affect it also? Yeah, if you step on water while you're burning, it, it's in, instantly yeah. extinguished. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so uh if you're if you're against a team that likes to use it a lot, well, in your home, maybe you can buy a boost and switch to a water map. Yeah. Or something. True. Um but well, I mean, that's that's another thing for another time. We we yeah. can look into that later, but I think yeah. uh, in order to keep the interest of time, uh, we should probably yes. move on predictions. to predictions. Week one, match it's one, Cloud players. at Minato. Um, this actually is a pretty hard one to call, and I know a lot of these are going to be hard to call because... I feel like a lot of my opinions personally are going to hinge on whoever they, they keep out, like whoever they mm-hmm. put on inactive. Yeah. Um, and a lot of teams haven't been putting their builds in yet. Granted, yeah, they're exactly. due tomorrow, so we, but still. We don't know. Yeah. Um, but I feel like Minato has been really solid 
but Cloud has been improving a lot, and I feel like their opportunity to get a lot of damage in is probably higher mm-hmm. than Minato is. But we did see a lot of good stuff from Rin. With that, with just raw damage, um, yeah. it's is it at you said it was at Minato's home? Yes, on the water. Um, so that means uh, okay. that a I lot of it. Cloud is actually going to be yeah. boosted by it. Yeah, actually, I, yeah. So actually, I might give the uh, the advantage to Cloud here with that mm-hmm. in mind, because otherwise, I feel like these two are actually fairly evenly matched. So, however, they could use the boost to change the map. Well, yeah, they that's true. Could, of course, but I mean, we we can't predict that. No, of course, we yeah. should just Not go into that. it going with yeah. with this set of circumstances. This is what we think, unless. But it's neat because we're doing this before the lineups and builds are due. Yeah. So maybe if Team Manito hears this, they can be like, oh, crap, they're right. Maybe we can use yeah. uh, that boost. Yeah. I don't know. Or maybe not. I mean, there's not really much time left to get them in. So Yeah. yeah. Um, Let's see. They have... It depends on who uh, Cloud benches, in my opinion. You think so? Yeah. Um, who they mm. bench and FA bench. Because if they FA bench who I think they are and they bench who I think they are, they'll have a strong lineup, and it'll be... They have, like, four fighters that are boosted by by water, right? Uh, I, I'm not sure if Darui is. He might be. No. Um, I, I don't think that no. Darui or Yugito do but oh everybody yeah Yuito else definitely not um yeah. it's interesting that darwi isn't because his jutsu is actually part water part lightning so yeah but it's a laser i don't think it's true i don't think it actually is boosted i could be wrong but hey um if so then so yeah that's not five with, characters with that and yeah that and an unknown they have b they have third raikage they have a they have uh udakata the last one Udakata, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's a lot. That's, yeah. So even that, even if it's not Darui, that's still four characters. And if they have all those in, then that's going to yeah. be great. I don't think they can have all of those in, uh, considering that I feel like at least one of those is going to be an active bench. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I feel like that gives the advantage to Cloud. So yeah, my vote's going for Cloud. Same here. Same for you, Burn. Mm-hmm. Okay. How about you, Gomo? Uh, I would, I would, uh, just for the reasons you guys stated, I, I, it's, it's tough, but I would say just Cloud, just based on some of the advantages and just some of the um, consistency we've seen in some of their characters. You know, mainly you know Darui and um, even um, the uh, Third Reich Kage as well. He's actually yeah. Yeah. Third Reich Kage is yeah. good. Yeah, uh, I feel like other than that, though, uh, personally, they're pretty evenly matched. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. On to the Actually. next match. Sage versus Uchiha. Mm. <laughs> that, mm. should, that should be pretty good, <laughs> I think. Um, Sage has been improving quite a lot. Um, they have Uchiha been. has a really strong team. I think yes. it will come down to who they put on their bench and FA bench. I mean, this first week is going to be hard to call because of the fact that we don't know majority of who's putting who on the FA bench. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be difficult for that reason. Yeah, mm-hmm. for a uh, a few of our, I feel like for every first week of every trimester, it's gonna be kind of hard. Mm-hmm. Like, um, honestly, it's harder to say who. I mean, who's the more old spammy team? I mean, because I think Sage might actually have. I Sage mean, is more Sage... old spammy overall. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I yeah. I think that um the the advantage is in Uchiha, but I'm backing Sage. I think Sage can do it. Like I, I feel like they have a good chance of, of actually being able to win this. They have um, enough Rasengans. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel like the the <laughs> I feel like the, the advantage might be even more in their favor if they were at home because yes. they do have water in their map, but yeah. uh, they are not. So I feel like Uchiha has a fair chance of winning it. Mm-hmm. Um. Like you said, though, I don't. I honestly do not know who Uchiha is gonna get out of their their roster because yeah. 
they're all fairly solid. Yeah, they're all fairly swollen. We, you can only yeah, have... we know who they're not going to, but we don't know who they are going to. So, wait, we know who they're yeah. not going to. I mean, I feel like Shisui and Sarada, at at the very least, are a given that they're not going to put those on the inactive bench. I also feel that Itachi so, is a given too, to be honest. Yeah, Itachi. I, I feel like it's probably between uh, Obito, uh, the last Sasuke, and Madara. I'm going to lean towards Obito, though. I'm going to lean towards um, Sasuke. Okay. Because I think Obito has done a lot more um, combos with the team, and his jutsu is mm -hmm. a lot better, in my opinion. That's true. And, and he mean, has a larger a <laughs> assortment of jutsus. I think yeah. he has, like, five different ones he can choose. Yeah, and he's really alt-happy when he really wants to. Yeah, so... I mean, um, has has um, Madara done much in uh, Uchiha? I mean, even though we haven't really seen well, any last, but I, I, I don't really... He's been okay. He's been pretty good. It's just he's, we haven't seen him that much. Solid. But I think yeah, the last Sasuke yeah. has actually had at least a better showing than Madara has when he was in. It's true, I, but that could I also be colored by the fact that we've just seen him more. Yeah. So, I don't know. Mm, it's I, tough. It's, it's really... Yeah, it's yeah. really tough. Um... I'm going to say I think Sage can win, but it's more likely that Uchiha will. So yeah. I'm going to go with Uchiha. I went with Sage. What about you, Gomo? Um, I think Sage has a chance, but I would say Uchiha just based on what I've seen so far. Well, yeah, just, it's fair. Just... I mean, I, I definitely agree with what Burn is saying. I, f I feel like they can definitely win. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, but if I had to place bets on it, then I would say Uchiha. No faith. No faith. But I'm well. glad to be proven wrong if, if that's yeah. not the please, case. Please, please prove us wrong. <laughs> on to match three. It helps me out. On to match three. We have Mist versus Taka. And I'm at home. Who's at home? You're I'm at, at home. home. So Lucky um, for you. I'm, I'm dancing the, the dance of joy. And I yes. will actually <laughs> refrain from saying who is going to win because you guys already know. So yeah, it's you already obvious. know who I'm going to vote for. So do it. Um, I'm, I'm not the type of person to be like, I don't want this team to win just because they're in my division. Like I get the, the thinking of that, but for me, it's more based on just how much I like the team. Um, and for me, I really love both of these teams. <laughs> they're some of my favorite ones. Um, I, I think, I feel like as for who will win though, um, I'm going to have to say Taka because there are a lot of unknowns with Mist right now. We have a lot of new scrolls that, that could help them out. We just don't know yet, but based on a lot of what I have seen from Taka, even though a fair bit of it has been testing, um, what has been solid has been really good in my opinion. So... I think Karin's really good. I think Jugo is pretty good. Fairly good, actually. Um, Yama Sasuke, of course. Great ult spammer. Mm -hmm. um, Taka Sasuke has a great potential as, a, as a, a Jutsu spammer, but for the same reasons as uh, Mist having unknowns, I, I won't really give my opinion on that. So Sakura has been decent as well. Um, and so he gets to that's blah. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like Taka will win it, actually. That, that's my personal opinion. And uh, being at home helps them a lot, too. So, yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that could maybe change <laughs> your, your, your uh, choice based on maybe just the map itself. So, I mean, it definitely helps yeah, a lot. That, um... I feel like that plays a big part into it, because Anytime Mist is at home, that's a huge advantage to them. Mm -hmm. An extreme advantage. And I am yeah. so glad it got randomized to that. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm gonna say Taka. For myself, I I I would actually I would I would say Taka, just for the reason that I think in Mist, one of the ones that stands out the most is probably Haku. Um Haku, yeah. and I can't really say 
some of the members are like as solid as Haku is. Um, you know, Kisame, they're still working with him. Zabuza needs some work. Mei has some moments. Yagura is probably the next, maybe most consistent. I, think Taka, so, yeah. I feel that you have, you know, the last soccer, which is, you know, I mean, she's, I don't know, I feel that she's a little more consistent than some of the members I miss have been. Mm -hmm. um, Jugo, of course, has shown very well. Um, and as well as some of the other members, Karin, especially. Like, I mean, Karin's probably like the Haku of, of Taka, so <laughs> in, yeah. in a sense, yeah. because of that. So I, I, I feel just uh, consistency wise and just character wise, I feel that maybe Taka just, I mean, Miss could do it, but I feel Taka may have a slight edge on, on this match. Yeah, I, I definitely, you brought up a good point there. I think the the low points of Taka are still higher than the low points of Mist right now. So, you know, Taka's quote-unquote weakest members right now, I feel like, are still more solid than Mist, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. We're cool, all Taka we'll then. <laughs> <laughs> On to match four, Asuma versus Kurinai. It's going to be a tough yeah. one to call. This I is... feel like these teams are also fairly, yeah. fairly well matched. Mm -hmm. It's a good week one. I'm liking this. I could see yeah. going to a, ma a match five, honestly, because both sides seem. I I'd say they both would be pretty good, depending on like I mean, Asuma, who they decide to bench, who they want to keep. Um, mm -hmm. Kurinai, who they bench and keep. I mean, I mean, does Asuma have? Uh, I guess they, they got decent, decent supports in regards to like yeah, if they, they have do. maybe Shino's they in do. for range. They can at least um, kind of keep the pressure. Um, um, yeah, they have Ino, Yamato. That's really good for that. Yamato Ino. Yeah. yeah. ETS Shikamaru. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, and I feel like Asuma has a lot of solid characters, and so does Kurinai. Yeah, I um, think I, I I personally think that we've seen Asuma kind of kind of weak in the preseason, but that's because they've used Eno once, and yeah, she was they, they, damn they're good, fairly light yeah. on using Eno and Choji. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's because it's preseason. So I feel like if they have those two in, they have a, a, an advantage over Kurinai. Mm -hmm. uh, Kurinai is home though right yes yes okay uh i uh, yeah so asuma can't benefit from that uh neither can kurinai so yeah i feel like nobody's gonna be using molten palm at least yeah actually kurinai would benefit from that um in the fact that um if if asuma is actually in on team asuma they could extinguish uh -huh. themselves oh that's true yeah mm -hmm. That, that's very true. Um, you know, is also like that as well. She has yeah. a same with PTS Shikamaru's as well, right? His oh, tags. really? Well, yeah. <laughs> so that's a yeah, lot of fire, um, a lot of explosions. Yeah, it's true. Uh, Kurunai has been solid. They have Shino, they have Gara, they have uh, Kiba. Both Kibas have been fairly good, and Hinata has been pretty all right too. Um. So, I, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna go with Kurinai on this one. I'm gonna go with Asuma. All right. Um, I, 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 I would I I would say Asuma myself. Um, mainly right. just for you know Shiko Cho if they got Shiko Cho if they got that combo that's scary like that that yeah. team I, that, that, team that combo was scary. really good. Um, but. Yeah. On to the next match. We have Hokage versus Stone. Oh, Jesus. Well, So Stone got nerfed and Hokage was shaky. True. Yeah. Um, I think Hokage is a, a, another one of those teams where there's a lot of unknowns going in mm -hmm. uh, to the main season because they have done a lot of changes going into the main season. I think they've done like disables for everyone on their team um some of which they never had before mm -hmm. so there are a lot of unknowns there um stone has been pretty solid especially kitamaru especially suchikage uh, Daydara and Daydara as well yeah pretty um, much the entire lineup is freaking swole except for um han han hasn't really done much unfortunately right 
And I have my own thoughts on that, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you've said it a few times. Yeah, I've said it, so that's why I don't really want to say it again. But, uh... Mm -hmm. it, I mean... It's going to be interesting, because I don't know who Hokage is going to swap out. I feel like it's maybe Hashirama. Um... Either maybe Hashirama or Boruto? Depending on how solid Boruto ends up uh, I, I know that... I know, um... They like Boruto, but I honestly think, based on least performance-wise, I mean, I I still would see him as at least maybe just a trimester bench at least for the first part. I mean, because honestly, I Could think be. they need some more testing for him. Yeah, and Hashirama That's... has a really good alt, so yeah. I I think Boruto would be the weakest in that that hmm. team. I honestly, I want to say Stone, so I'm going to say Stone because of the fact uh... that um, even though they have been nerfed. They are still fairly solid. Granted, they'll have to they find are. new builds. Um, they will. But for two they have, characters. Yeah, they have two ranged characters. Yeah. Which could put Hokage at a disadvantage. But the thing yeah, is, Hokage time... also has um, some... They have a good amount of ranged ults, so... That could be a thing, too. Yeah, I was going to say they have a good amount of ranged ults. They have a good amount of ranged jutsus and yeah. fair movement potential, especially from Minato. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I feel like they could counter some of the ranged aggression a little bit better. Um, so I think... I mean, okay, one's in Genie, one's in Joni. And, and you know, it, 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 you can take that with a grain of salt. I, I'm going to say Stone because they have swept three times in mm -hmm. preseason. Yeah. I, so I, I do want Hokage to pull out a good showing and possibly win, though. That That is going to be, as far as who I think will win, Stone, but who I want to win is Hokage. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, for myself, I'd say for me it comes down to data. Um, Hokage has been able to uh, procure... Uh, procure quite a bit of more data I feel than Stone has and with the changes to the characters I feel Hokage may have more of a grasp on their characters um, at this uh, point in time because Stone doesn't really know how the characters are going to perform now especially some of the ones that didn't get to get a lot of showing and with the changes I, which is why again Hokage would probably I would say it would be my choice for this just based on that reason alone that's fair yeah that's a good answer <laughs> So we've got two for Stone, one for Hokage? Yep. Yeah. All On right. to the next match. Akatsuki versus Jin Chiriki. And you both, oh. you both are already going to vote for Jin Chiriki, so I get to vote by myself this time. Yay. Hmm. Akatsuki versus Jin Chiriki. Well, we already know that Nagato got nerfed to hell. Um, yes, he did. Yeah, it was unfortunate, but uh, after week three, hell no, we're not going on. We're oh, not going on gone. Nagato's wild ride again. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say Jinchiriki simply because they are solid. Um, and mm -hmm. the fact that Akatsuki, Akatsuki has been fairly experimental, but after the nerf to Nagato. He might be in his, uh, a bad enough place where they might not want to use him, or use him uh, very sparingly. True. I feel like Nagato can still make a good, a decent ult spammer. I mean, he can't throw out two ults anymore, which is the takeaway. So maybe they'd yeah. want to build chakra on him because he does have a chakra plus one naturally. Yeah. So they thing. could give him another one and Naruto chakra plus two. <laughs> Or Chakra Plus 2 that make his ultimate really weak. Yeah, well, so he throws out like um, seven, it doesn't matter. Fuck. Um my thing, yeah. I mean do you think Akatsuki will hold up well though? Because I'm not sure. I, I'm I'm with you and that I think we will win. It's just but that there, there's so many unknowns because There um, are a lot of unknowns. There there, there have been a lot of is inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, week week one there was a really good showing for Kakazu and not a good showing from. Oh God, I can never Nagato, remember his name. Hidan. Hidan. 
Um, and then the yeah. next week, there was a pretty good showing from Idan, but then, you know, there was practically no showing from right. uh, Nagato. And then the next week, Nagato blew everything out of the water. And then week four, <laughs> it was just like stuff. They got destroyed. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I there's saying. really little to no data that I can yeah, go back on. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Akatsuki. Um, yeah, I feel like they will... I don't think we're going to sweep them. Uh, I don't really want to sweep anybody, <laughs> to be completely honest. But in I don't before, feel like we will. I don't, I don't feel like it'll be a landslide. In um, before you sweep them. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want I'm to. just kidding. Um, <laughs> it'll be definitely a fun little match. But... Yeah. Is there is there anything you gotta you wanna add, Gomo? No, no, whatever Dark uh, Darky said. Okay. On to match seven. We have Sound versus Guy. I'm gonna say Sound. I'm gonna say Sound as well because I saw who Guy benched. Yeah. I peaked. You did. <laughs> you opened your gift early, Dark. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I opened my gift early, so I'm gonna say Sound. Because why? Why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> um, yeah. To elaborate more on my sound vote, I think. Actually, I'll let I'll let Goma go first before I start elaborating on my shit. <laughs> oh god. Um, I would say sound <laughs> without any knowledge of who guy is uh, benching, just because of just um what I've seen from sound. They they definitely seem like they're kind of getting um their characters in order. A guy still seems. Um, I mean, they got a few uh, good uh, players. I mean, mainly uh, Lee. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he's just showed pretty well. A guy, it's hard to say. I mean, he's kind of up and down. Because I think a lot of times when Guy is in the lineup and Lee's there too, Lee just kind of takes over and just does most of the work anyways. So, uh, sure. more as with sound, I feel, I don't know, I feel the Dokis, if Tiyu is in, uh, might really uh, uh, affect them a lot just because, I mean, the thing stands right in front of you all the time and if like you know Lee's trying to ult he'll hit it or they'll start trying to do anything and they'll just, just run into the doki mm -hmm. yeah um yeah so I, I I definitely that's three for sound then um yeah all right. on to the next um, match right yeah whatever or... I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna keep going it's fine <laughs> do, do you want to elaborate I just wanted to say real quick I think I will agree with Gomo that Sound has been looking a lot more solid lately. Um, mm -hmm. You know, even taking the uh, the guy bench out of the equation here because I didn't peak, but Burn peaked, and then he told me about it. So yeah, uh, I I do know. Um, but even taking that out of account, I think Sound has more solid fighters across their entire roster than Guy does at this moment. So that's why I think sound can do it. Sounds I'm good done. to me. So on to the next <laughs> match, we have Sand versus Kakashi. Is this match seven? Match, match eight. eight. Match eight. Yep, the okay. final match, which is why I was kind of uh, rushing know... it. <laughs> right. We know that Sand is very powerful. It's mainly been... the that one team they've been using. Um, but considering how well Kakashi stacked up against Uchiha, which is really impressive to me. Mm -hmm. um, Sand is at home, you said? Oh Kakashi's no, at Kakashi home. is at home. Kakashi, so okay. you, you have to be wary of those trees. That's true. If they have Tamari, that might be a little bit m less effective because the trees might block some of those projectiles. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, Sand, okay, here's my thoughts on Sand are very complicated because I think they're a very strong team, but I feel like their strength is very fragmented. Like, they have that one team that's very, very powerful, Gara and Tamari, and then mm -hmm. they have PTS Tamari, who's also very strong, just on her own merits. And then Kakuro's good, Donza we've seen little to nothing of. And then Ross has been decent. Mm -hmm. He's been solid, but I 
I wouldn't go as far to say that he's been like great or anything. Um, whereas Kashi, I feel like especially last week, they've stepped up their game a lot. And with all the disables they've done, I think it'll help them. At the same time, though, I'm going to have to go with the same logic to, to stay consistent in that there are a lot of unknowns when it comes to Kashi because there are a lot of new disables they've done yeah, to their well, character. For, for the most part, they haven't disabled crap until now. So this is going to be very yes. interesting. Very interesting to see how this pans mm. out. Yeah, which makes it hard to tell how the their characters are going to react to the change. Mm -hmm. As of where, like, you know, other teams, that we've seen how certain characters um, have adjusted to their disables. Right. Which is, which is largely what a lot of teams have used the preseason for. Like, um, you know, and that's been limited to two characters. But at the same time, I don't think Kakashi did that once in the middle of preseason. Um, I could be wrong, but yeah, I think I think they've only done that done. So I, I am going to say probably Sand because there are less unknowns there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say Sand as well. I am. Uh going to go with Kakashi just to be different. That's fine. I mean, I think they can do it. It's yeah. just... Sand's yeah, going to be hard. But, yeah. you know, hey. I, I, I have faith. Me too. In my old I, team. I would just like it to be close. Yeah. Yeah, I want it to be a good match. And technically, it's partly my old team too. So, I, I do have a a spot for them in this I mean, part of my kind of my old team too kind of yeah yeah a little bit <laughs> new and the old you know yeah um but yeah that is our predictions um for all of next week i am definitely excited for this friday um if we want to talk about the changes we've done we can go ahead and do that um if you want to take the the reins burn because you actually can have some of this stuff pulled up and can probably talk about it more accurately than I can. But I'm I'm sorry, what? Do you want to talk about some of the changes on the end cast going into our first trimester? I'm sorry, no, sure. Yeah. Um so first off Are you okay? <laughs> I, I got massively distracted by somebody. Oh, okay. Me. Um so First off, we have um, ranged alt characters. Characters with ranged alts. Um, sorry, give me a second. Okay. He's creating art. Or it's a cat, probably. Cat art. Uh oh. But you can still hear us, okay. Um, yeah, okay. Well, so I, I will let you take this, uh, Orange. Yes. Uh, okay, so ranged ults. Characters with ranged ults. Uh, they already had one nerf coming into the preseason, which was the lower damage. But from what we saw in the latter half of the preseason, in many cases, this didn't prove to be enough because of the massive amount of just power that these kind of old spammers could could put out they're they're very much the uh the dominant factor in a lot of matches so what we as the staff opted to do after a few uh, maybe like a week or two of deliberation uh, i know we've used this this time um to actually talk about this um we've chosen to increase the amount of chakra that ranged ults take it's somewhere it's it's in between uh the normal ultimate cost and the five element seal ultimate cost um it's it's like right in between so right in the middle there um it's a higher ultimate cost so they can basically only throw out one and then have to charge up pretty much a little bit more than halfway to throw out another one. Um, which we felt was fair. And yeah. 
there are yeah there are a few characters which were standouts that we've already talked about like uh, Nagato and Sarada uh, a few others that we haven't mentioned though I think there are three others which are Hashirama Sage Hashirama um, who else Sage Hashirama uh, let me actually pull it up. Sorry. It's okay. Peeps Peeps can hear me now, by the way, because the loud sounds stopped. Um, Let's see. There is Darui, Nagato, of course, um, Sarada, PTS Tamari, and Sage Hashirama. So yeah, Nagato. Yeah. So it, it, it affects five different teams. Um, mm. And these are characters that were whew, a bit ridiculous um, with, with yeah. the amount of alt spamming going on, um, specifically yeah. because of Ultimate Chakra Saver. Um, these people right. were banned from Ultimate Chakra Saver as well. Yeah, um, so they not only have the, the, chakra, um, the chakra mount nerf, so it takes more chakra to do their ultimate but now they can't use ultimate chakra saver as well but it's just these five and i don't really foresee other characters being as problematic as these characters um another thing to note actually is the the characters with ranged ultimates if they the ones that aren't banned off of ultimate chakra saver um if they do use ultimate chakra saver in their build, they will have a little bit less than normal uh, chakra required for an ult, but it's not quite ultimate chakra saver level. I made it pretty much right in between uh, regular level and ultimate chakra saver level, so it you're still kind of getting, uh, you know, a little bit of a uh, an advantage by using it, but. Uh, it is going to make people think a little bit more about that kind of stuff. That kind of blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Um, I think that uh, it'll definitely be interesting to see how certain builds change because of these things. Oh, for sure. But yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so, Burn, what is our next thing? Burn uh, is not able to. Oh, he's still gone. Okay. No, he had to. He had to step away again and leave the rest. Oh, of us. sorry. I'm yeah. sorry, Burn. Don't get stressed out. It's okay. Okay. So the next thing, uh, I guess, because it's easy for me to recall this, and we've talked about it, is uh, our lineup changes. Um, we enacted a new rule to where you can use a character three times in a lineup still, but if you do that, um you are penalized for the next four weeks and you're not allowed to use that character and uh, three spots in your lineup again uh, for the for the next four weeks. So it, it kind of encourages just trying more characters and uh, less of just, oh, well, this character is clearly my best character. So I'm just a little diversity. Every single, yeah, a little bit more diversity. A little bit less of, oh, this is my best character, so I'm just going to put him in every single lineup and hope for the best. Because, yeah, I don't... It's kind of less interesting to do that. And I want to try to incentivize uh, smart team building as much as possible. Um, and interesting team building as well. So, And just to make it clear, too, the, um, if you have anyone in your... Um, lineup in just three times just any character you can't do like maybe like let's say like week uh like week one you want to have um you know like Fu in every every match and then the next week you know we were banned from using her three times for four weeks but we do it for someone else it, it's it's straight for anybody it's yeah. if you do it three times for any one character you have to wait four weeks till you can do it with any other character again yeah so it's it, you have to be really careful with who you're picking to do this with um because yeah once you do it one time next four weeks you're you're not doing it again so um yeah so i definitely am excited about this particular change it's going to 
I think it's going to change up the landscape uh, quite a bit, maybe more than it seems like it will. I mean, we want to try to, the reason we still left the option to use it three times is because I don't, none of us really want to throw a bunch of restrictions on everything. Like, we only do it because we have to. And I, I like allowing as much freedom as possible in builds and lineups. I mean, that's the whole reason I've done the scroll system. But I don't know. It's just uh, sometimes the teams will do this, and it's just not interesting to see. It's, it's fairly powerful when they do it as well. So I just wanted to kind of even these things out. But uh, yeah, so those are the two main structure changes. We have a lot of new scrolls as well. Um, which you can help me talk about Gomo if you want, because this is more just we can talk about how we want to use them and how we think other teams will use them and stuff. Yeah, I just got to so, pull up the page here. Yes. I don't want to miss any. I think we have like seven new squirrels. I think so around there. Yeah, six or seven. But yeah, so I, I very happy about uh, how the preseason preseason went as a whole. Um, obviously, not everything in the preseason is going to be set in stone. Um, I wanted to try to make that as clear as possible going into it and that there might be changes between the preseason and the main season uh, because we can't foresee everything based off of every test we've done. I mean, just look at DBZ League. They thought that there weren't going to be any tags, and they literally have the exact number of tags that they had last season, or the season before that season. So it's it, it's kind of hard. You, you have to more judge it based on your actual um your actual matches going on here and it's it's a little tough to do that because in pseudo league you know we we had like four people building these teams and we were taking four teams each so it, it was kind of hard to judge based on that and uh i, I think that the preseason has helped us really figure out what works and what doesn't work and what we can change to make it better going into the main season. So um, some of the scroll changes um, or additions, we should say. Um, now, one you're going to be familiar with, uh, Packrat. Uh, Packrat used to be yeah. a two-point uh, scroll, but now it is a one-point scroll as opposed to the... Um, and what the difference is, basically, it gives you... Um, what is it here? Two, uh, basically, you get an extra item in two slots with right. uh, the pack rest. So you get a little boost, but you don't have to commit, maybe, you know, you have to put as many points into maybe, okay, maybe I just want maybe this person to have an extra ointment. Maybe someone wants maybe an extra substitution log, but you don't really want to have anything else for the other ones. And you still want to have yeah. maybe a couple two point scrolls on top of it. There's something for you right there. Yeah, because you'll notice that most characters want to use they'll they'll either have one preferred item slot or two preferred item slots um so i feel like a, a lot more people will use this type of scroll now that pack rat is a thing and hoarder is a, a two-point scroll which was it basically is the same thing that pack rat was it's just with a different name because it made less sense to have hoarder be the one point the scroll lesser version yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we'll be seeing pack rat a lot more often with this. Um, and, uh, to make it completely clear, if you want to use the scroll, uh, there, there's a reason why we provided a, uh, an example, a build example in our scrolls list with this scroll, uh, was because to demonstrate how you actually are supposed to use it in a build. Um, so if you use this and you have it listed in your bill, you know, pack rat one point, right next to that, you want to put in brackets the, the slots that you want to boost. 
So you, you could do like up right or down left or whatever combination you want to do. And that's how you use the scroll. So yeah, uh, excited about that actually. <laughs> Oh, definitely, because it's not very often, like you said, that a character will use more than two items in their slot. So yeah. So the sure. uh, next uh, scroll is a another lesser scroll of sorts, uh, Relentless, which you've heard us mention a few times in this already today. Um, but it's basically mm -hmm. a lesser berserker. It will yeah, do that's exactly right. about what, like roughly about half the damage that berserker does to your guard around there if, if i want to get technical with my whole modding shtick and my my terms here um there are values in in these files that determine these things and uh the, the base uh value is 83f and this is in hex code so if you don't understand hex code uh maybe you could look that up i'm not gonna try to explain it here but uh so yeah 83f is the base guard break uh, value. Berserker is AO40. So A040, and that's pretty big leap there. Uh, but I believe I believe I made Relentless like 40, 40. So it's it's pretty much, I tried to make it, yeah, pretty much half the effectiveness of a the, the Berserker. As Maybe close not to exactly, half as but you can. yeah. Huh? As close to half as you can. Also, I'm back. Finally. Yeah. Hi. Welcome back. Hi. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I'm also really excited about these scrolls. Uh, I know that uh, at, at first glance they might seem like padding, but uh, they're they're more important than that because it, it allows you to use that type that type of scroll that you wanted, but without using as many points, you can free up more points to try to do different things with your build. Because mm -hmm. I, I noticed. There are multiple times when making builds with Gomal and uh, Lone Fox that, you know, we wanted to try certain scrolls, but we had to we had to compromise a lot with these types of scrolls, and it prevented us from using more of the scrolls that we wanted to use. So that, that's one of the reasons we've implemented a lot of these lesser scrolls. Mm -hmm. Anywho. I'm, and just one more thing about Relentless as well is that it does share a, a maximum with a Berserker or any Guard Break scroll. So if you have two Relentless, you cannot have a Berserker. Or you can have one Relentless, one Berserker, or two Berserkers and no Relentless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and similar for Pack Rat and Hoarder. They also and share. even the, the Palm scrolls. Yes, yeah. which we will get to. Yeah. Uh, the so. next new scroll, uh, Super Dash, which is again another um, basically a half of a uh, main scroll that we have already, which is what Ultimate uh, Ultimate Dash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ultimate Dash. And it's basically, of course, a lesser version, so it's half as effective as that, but it still gives you another option. If you don't want to commit to Ultimate Dash, you can at least get a little extra um, you know, boost to their movement with that, and then still put the scrolls you want on as well. Right, it's it's a sizable boost. It's like the difference between a, you know, you can think of, of a lot of these as like the difference between an attack plus one and an attack plus two, or a defense plus one and a defense plus two, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, there's just a tier one, and then there's a tier two of it, which is a little bit stronger. So yeah, and it's it's worth mentioning that uh, Super Dash and Ultimate Dash also share a maximum, and for this one, it's actually three. Um, for Pack rat and order, it's it's two, I believe, right? Pack rat and order is two. Um, and then yeah, berserker relentless is also two, but for super dash and ultimate dash, it's three. So you can have three ultimate dashes, two ultimate dashes, and a super dash, uh, two super dashes and an ultimate dash, or three ultimate dashes, no super dash. I already said that. Uh, three super dashes and no ultimate dash. So you can go a lot of different ways with that one. Um, I, we felt it was less of an abusable scroll, mm -hmm. so having a limit of three is a little bit uh, a little bit more fair to the actual effectiveness of the scroll. 
so the uh, next few uh, scrolls that we have are actually uh, Awakening Scrolls, some new additions. Yes. Um, yeah. Both are at two points. Um, so for people who are fans of Awakening builds, this is hopefully will add more to that. And I hope you mm -hmm. enjoy these as well. And I'm actually looking forward to seeing how people utilize these in their builds. Uh, the first oh, yeah. being a Gentle Fist, which has basically become a, uh, like a Yuga, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, where it you may... basically make this character like a Hyuga. Um, and it's based on the amount of times that your combo hits. So um, the longer the combo, yeah. the more actual damage to the chakra um, of the enemy that uh, that you right. do. Yeah. And you actually yeah. deplete the bar. Like, the bar, bar becomes smaller. Right. You're not just taking chakra. It's like it's basically what, like what happens when you counter, like your actual chakra bar becomes smaller. This is the same thing. Um, and before, this was an attribute that only the human characters had when going into Awakening. I, I think it's only like five characters that have this, um, something like that. That that had this ability naturally. Yeah, only two. Well, only two, but then I I. Changed oh yeah, it. then you changed it to include every Hyuga, which makes more sense. Yeah, honestly. So yes. every Hyuga, including Boruto, um, yeah. has this naturally. So if you give them, um, this scroll, it boosts it up to around, well, ninety five percent to ninety percent around there of the damage you do will be also done to to the bar instead of around 60 percent which is what yeah. we're aiming for so um, it, it's it's largely proportionate to the amount of hits you're doing but it's also somewhat calculated to your actual damage so yeah no matter what the amount of damage you're doing to the chakra bar is going to be less than you're doing to the health bar mm -hmm. but for Hugo characters if you want that little extra going into awakening then you can slap the scroll on it's not necessary mm -hmm. uh because using gentle fists on a non Hyuga character will bring, uh, will basically make it the same as if you had a Hyuga character. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and, really, and... really awesome scroll. Yeah. And all of these Hyuga characters are, of course, PTS Hinata, the last Hinata, Hinata, I ship it in Hinata, all the forms of Hinata, um, Hanabi, yeah. Boruto, and both Nejis. And then Nejis. Yeah. E. So yeah, um, but yeah, really, really excited for this scroll. I, I, I would love to see it used um, because it is a really power, like it's a really useful sort of uh, attribute to have in Awakening. It was something that was really prevalent back in like season two when Neji actually used to instant awaken. Um, so I feel like in this past season we really haven't gotten to see this sort of attribute very much. And I feel like this scroll will bring it a little bit more into the forefront. The uh, next one also is another interesting one as well. A Gate of Limit, which basically yes. you become uh, Lee, your guy, pretty much in Awakening. Because your yeah. movement speed is significantly increased in all forms. Yeah, so any movement you do that isn't like... Um, that isn't like... A, a, a canned animation like a combo or a grab or a jutsu or something uh, is sped up by quite a bit. So you're walking, your ninja movement, your dashes, uh, your ninja dashes, uh, all your chakra dashes and everything is all sped up quite a bit. And uh, it can prove to be very effective because not only are you faster, your actual it makes it so that you can actually travel further with these things. So you could be across the stage, awaken, chakra dash your opponent, and be right there, basically. Um, and it's especially scary when you have it on giant awakenings. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, very useful scroll, uh, also named after one of the eight gates. So, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing this one too. That can be next. That can be such such an interesting oh, scroll. Yeah. yeah. 
So uh, next uh, new scroll that we have is another two point scroll, uh, Sign Master. Um, basically, for any of you people that have enhanced jutsus that you you know get tired of waiting for them to fire off and get hit, this way they can uh, fire off two times as fast. Uh, your enhanced jutsus will be charged faster, so you can actually um, fire them off as opposed to just disabling them entirely, which I know some teams have done already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as for the characters that have this, I know I haven't actually put together a list of it formally yet. It's basically um, any of the Shippuden Naruto's Rasengan's, uh, any of the Shippuden Sasuke's Chidori's, uh, mm-hmm. and Fireball. Um, we have Kisame, we have both Minato's that have chargeable ones. We have... Oh, man. I mean, I'm sure there are more of them that have it that I'm just not thinking of. But, uh, oh, Kakashi... Uh, the lightning blade that Kakashi's have. Um, yeah. The ship it in ones, not the young Kakashi. That is also chargeable. Um, so this can prove useful for quite a few characters. There's mm-hmm. probably still more I'm not thinking of, but that's okay. Um, I really enjoy seeing... I-, I think this is going to actually create some really interesting builds on these type of characters. So... Yeah, I, I think it's going to open up more jutsu spam opportunities for these characters. Because I do notice that characters with enhanced jutsus like their jutsus a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah really so... do. Like Takasasuke. <laughs> yeah, and Kakashi on Team Kakashi. Mm-hmm. Um, Kisame, obviously. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I think this is definitely a great addition. Something I've wanted to do for a while. And... Uh, I didn't. I didn't actually think of it until I was like, "Wait, I can disable enhanced jutsus by changing this value to zero. Does that mean if I change it to something else, it will uh, affect the time it takes?" It was kind of an accidental discovery, and then when mm-hmm. I figured it out, I was just like, "Oh, this has to be a thing. <laughs> this has to." So, yeah, really excited for this scroll. A lot of these scrolls, I'm really excited for. <laughs> But yeah, that's that one. And then uh, finally, um, uh, two other scrolls that you've heard us mentioned already, uh, Molten Palm and Toxic Palm. Yes. Yeah. Those are fun. Uh, two, yeah, two scrolls that I've already gone into a lot, so I'm not going to really cover them again. They basically share the same purpose, but they accomplish it a little bit differently. So depending on certain factors like your stage or just how your character plays in general, you might want to use a different scroll um, for these two. So, yeah, uh, I, I really, I'm a big fan. These are probably my favorite editions of any of the scrolls that we've mm-hmm. done. For uh, also, the main season. also, please keep in mind that these are not stackable. No, they are not, <laughs> and uh, they also yeah. do share a limit. They they do share a com- uh, combo limit, so you can only have two quote-unquote palms on your on your team yeah um but they're they have their upsides they have their downsides having both of them at the same time is just ridiculous i'm sorry right and you can still technically achieve that by putting them on two different characters and maybe like putting them on the same team or something but yeah yeah Putting them on one character is a little bit too ridiculous. Yeah, putting and, both uh, of those on Kitamaro and giving him defense plus two. No, please. Right. And there, there are some characters that do already have uh, either a fire uh, debuff or uh, a poison debuff at the end of their combo. So if you figure out those types of things for those characters, uh, Sage Kawato is actually one I thought of. He already has a poison effect at the end of his combo. Um it's 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 a lot weaker than toxic palm is but if you were to pair it with molten palm it could be really good um so yeah it's just stuff like that uh you know it really it can help pad out damage but it's it's in an interesting way it has a lot of variables as to how you're actually padding out the damage it's not something like oh well i have a melee heavy character so i'm just going to slap this on them without thinking Mm-hmm. They have their ups and downs. So yeah, that's all the new scrolls. Um, is there anything else to add that we 
I, I, I don't believe so. We're already getting into two hour territory. Yeah, so we can just go ahead and cut it off here. Yeah. Um, thank you all for listening, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this edition of Pencast. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, good and luck. I, uh, yes, we'll good luck in the, the main season. season. Yeah. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye.